What's up, dude, man? It's a nerd dad, and I've got another lightsaber review for you guys. Check it out. What's going on, everybody? It's Chris, aka the Nerd Dad, and I have another lightsaber here for you guys. Uh, this is my converted Kylo Ren lightsaber that's been converted by Brian at Pit Force 5. Now, this isn't just your typical converted lightsaber. What Brian did here was something incredible. It was something that made this lightsaber more accurate to the movie. All right, so what Brian ended up doing for me here was he ended up taking the lightsaber and taking the emitters, and he narrowed them down, and he actually made them a little bit longer. Um, and also here in the main emitter here, you can actually see it's also thinner. Um, the original one, the way it came out was uh, you could see how the side emitters were, were fat and short and that main emitter there that also was uh, uh, fatter and shorter as well. So it wasn't really movie accurate. Uh, it's something I really want on this lightsaber and I'm just really glad I sent it to Brian. It took about a month just to get it back after I shipped it to him, so that's not too bad. Um, I know after mine was shipped out and after mine was done from him, it did take a while for him to start pushing out more because his business really took off from there. Um, one thing he was able to do for me was he took this red translucent wire. This is actually a, a real wire now. Um, the original one was actually a, a fake red wire. It was more of a plastic feel in there. And then also the blue wire that was in the inside, uh, that was a fake blue one. This one here is a real blue wire. Uh, he also went in and he kind of weathered it up a little bit here as well around the uh, around the hilt he's also able to do the same I did ask him for the force awaken style so you can kind of see the emitter seemed a little burned something I really wanted um, I preferred the Kylo Ren from episode 7 that was the one I thought he looked a lot cool and even just down to what he wore I felt like he was a little bit more of a, a more of a badass also what he did too was he took the pommel he went in and dirtied up the pommel for me too. So the original one, it was just plain red. It was boring. Um, so like I said, he did take it up and he dirtied it up for me. And it, it came out extremely, extremely well. I love this thing. Part of Brian's commission is he includes a hex key. The hex key is used for the side emitters and also for the main blade. He did also include these blade plugs, which um, from what I've seen on pictures, it seems semi-accurate. Um, they're 3D printed. And then also the main blade is now being held on here. The original version of it, it was actually a, uh, I believe it was this button here. Uh, this was the one that actually originally released the, uh, the blade from the inside the hilt. But now it's actually being used as a auxiliary button. So uh, this is running a CFX. Um, I wonder in the future if he's ever going to move over to Profi. I'm curious about that. Um, I don't own a Profi yet, actually. I have one sent out right now. It's currently being um, commissioned now. I'm not going to say who it's from. Um, I'll let that. Uh, I'll bring that up whenever um, I get it back. So that's going to be pretty awesome. A little hack I actually ended up doing for the blade plugs is I found this user off of Facebook who uh, 3D printed um, these LED that would actually fit for the um, NeoPixel and it has uh, LEDs in the end. So what I just did was I went ahead and just glued it onto the main blade, just to the bottom, and that way I get a little bit of shine through. Um, I believe the seller was selling a seven inch version of it. Um, maybe I could do the side emitters one of these days. I don't know if I will. Uh, maybe I'll just keep it that way, but it does get a pretty cool shine through when it comes to that main emitter. So let's talk about the lightsaber a little bit more. Uh, what Brian ended up doing was he was able to keep the original activation button, which is a switch up. Uh, that's going to just simply activate the lightsaber. Um, like I said earlier, that this new button here, that's the auxiliary button, that's going to be for flash on clash. It's going to be for blast or deflex and also a uh, lock up. So uh, I really, really enjoyed that. If I just take the palm off, you can actually see the palm a little bit more. That's a little bit more weathered up there. What Brian ended up doing was he ended up printing his own chassis that goes on the inside. So the original part here, which you would be able to see through the lightsaber, this is different too. So this is not the original one, this is the 3D printed one. If you pull it out a little bit, you have to see if that's bored there. And then removable battery. 
Yeah, this little finicky you get this in sometimes. I'm just if I can even get it on camera. You don't want to force it in there. There we go. So nicely in there. Kept it right back on. With the Saber fonts, I'm sure a lot of people are asking me what's on it. So Brian really packed this thing with Saber fonts from Kylo to Luke Skywalker to Mace Windu. He put a whole bunch of stuff in here. I, I mainly just run with the Force Awakens. Obviously, it is a Kylo Ren lightsaber. Um, so I, I, what I'm running on this currently is Son of Darkness. I will leave that. Uh, I will leave the link to the description below so you guys can get the Saber font. I think it's probably the most accurate one when it comes to Kylo Ren's. Um, so basically all you have to do is either A, you can take the switch, flip it up, or you can press the auxiliary button, and that'll wake it up. It might actually already be awake, but if I just take it and flip it up. Take it, and smooth swing. There's the... Flash on clash. Little blast of E-flat. You can see it's very responsive. Lock up. And power back off. Brian does make some side blades for it. These are right here. These are also 3D printed as well. And they are 7 8 so they are thinner. Those go there on the side emitters. Uh, I believe Brian did make a new style of blade. Um, I'm really hoping maybe I can get one of those from him one of these days. I know the man's really, really busy, so hopefully I can place an order and get the new blade. So since I am running with the older blade style, um, this is it here. This is a 3D printed here. It is using a new pixel blade. It's a uh, see-through one here. You can kind of see the foam in there. Uh, this is 3D printed. And then it goes over here and it goes to uh, more of a hot glue scoring, if you can see here. And as I move further down the line, it does turn back into that 3D printed. So this is very delicate. This is something you definitely don't want to do it with. Um, I really wished uh, Brian gave the, op the uh, option to size the blade. Um, I'm not a very tall person, and so I, I want to say it's probably 34, 36. On um, my other Neopixel blades, I run at a uh, 32 and a half. And from just the sound of that, you can see I'm pretty short. But then again, you know what? I didn't even ask. Who knows? Maybe it could have just been the option, but I didn't even ask. But I don't follow him for that. Um, when I do order, or if I'm able to order another blade from him in the future, I'm hoping maybe he can scale it down for me. I'm sure you guys may want to see in action a little bit with the blade. Uh, the, like I said, the blade is really, really long. So I'm going to try and fit it in and frame as much as I can for you guys. Uh, I'm not going to show the entire thing, but I will kind of move it left from the right so you can kind of see it and see what you guys think about it, okay? All right, so now with the main blade, along with the side emitters, you can see just how much longer this really gets. And you can kind of tell this is the hilt. And as I go all the way down, that thing is long. And I'm short because your boy's not very tall. That'd be an understanding that I'm not tall at all. I'll move it over right here. And I'll go and turn off the light. Let's see if it's asleep. Son of darkness, heir apparent to Lord Vader. Fire this bad boy up. You can see it's bright, super bright. Um, as of right now, the sound is in the lowest setting because this thing, when it's in the highest, even it's the medium setting, it's so loud and it's overpowers. I'm pretty sure I've gotten in trouble here at home a couple times because I, when me and my daughter play with it, it's just super loud. You can now see blast reflex. Lock up. Power off. You know, like I said, Brian did pack this saber with a bunch of saber fonts. Um, there is one specific one that I found that I really wanted to put on it. I felt like it fit it very, very well. Now, I found it off on uh, Facebook, and then I ended up uh, getting and downloading it. It's by Blue Force Company. It's called The Return of the Sith. And it's based off of Episode 9 when Palpatine comes back. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but at this point, I'm pretty sure everyone's seen it already. Um, it is free, uh, but, you know, it is, you know, highly encouraged to donate to the company because it must have taken them quite some time to do it so uh, currently i believe i'm still on sun of darkness and so all you have to do is just hold the aux button 
and I put it at the very end. So it's at the very, very back. Here it is. And you're gonna flip it up. This thing's awesome. I, I think it fits so well. Awesome, right? Awesome, isn't it? Like, you know, I will leave the, the link to Blue Force Company so you guys can get it at yourself. But like I said, I highly encourage you to donate to them. Uh, one last thing that the Saber does have, um, ah, man, I kind of wish it was a little different about how to get to it, but it does have music. Uh, my other CFX Saber has music as well. And, um, Basically, all I have to do is press the power button twice and it'll play the music. Um, I wish this was possibly, wi not wired, but programmed to press the up button twice, maybe quickly, to where it plays music. Um, because I run Sun of Darkness, it's at the very, very beginning of, this, of, this, uh, of this, the font list. And so you have to hold on the aux and then go all the way there. There's no back button. So if you hold on, uh, luckily, I'm actually right now at the return of the Sith to where it's towards the end, so it should be the next one. So once you hear the continue music, you hold the aux button. So it's going to play music and it's going to go back to the saber font that it was last on. So in this case, the return of the sit. And it's going to play the pre-on, so. Timing, that was impeccable timing. And the music goes, and you can just go off. And then you just press the aux button twice. Which, again, that turns it off. I wish it would turn on the music as well, but flip it off. Oh no, it's hold, sorry. And then if I just want to go back to Sound of Darkness, we have uh, Sound Bag Selection. Let's we'll skip this one, go through the menu. And these are the default Saber fonts that CFX normally comes with. I never use them. Hold. I'll show you the dark side. And one more time. I will say Brian did an amazing job on this. Um, I would highly recommend using his service. Uh, all around, Brian was 100%. He would just 100% communicate with me with everything going on with the saber. Um, there was no issues with it. It was more of. You know, he obviously had other commissions to work on, and once he finished those and he was getting to mine, uh, he reached out to me and let me know, hey, uh, about to start on your Saber. He sent me an update of uh, when he ended up changing, <laughs> bumped the camera, uh, ended up changing, or uh, weathering the inside of this and changing out the wires. Um, and then from there, you know, I, I got the notification from him that he was done and it was getting ready to ship. Um, it did take about a month. Um, that's not bad. That's not terrible. Um, but it was totally worth it. Uh, his service was 100% amazing. I enjoyed using him the entire time. So I highly recommend using him. If anyone has a um, Force Effects lightsaber uh, that is, or a, that is a Kylo Ren, I'd recommend uh, reaching out to him. Now, there are two different lightsabers in case you don't know. Um, so Disney was selling the Disney Park version, which is this one here. The original one, this cap would unscrew and you would have to pop it off 
and then put the blade in, and then you put the ring right back on, tighten it back up. Um, the side emitters was more of a push in lock. So because of that, what Brian was able to do was able to put a new one in, mill it down so it's thinner, so it's more movie accurate. Now obviously they utilize the uh, hex keys to get them out. Now during uh, during after now after the opening of Galaxy's Edge, they released the Legacy Sabers and they came out with the Kylo Red Leg Legacy Saber, which is different from this one. Um, almost exactly the same. The only difference on that one though is the emitter. The emitter, you don't take it off. You weren't able to take it off, and it's just uh, attached to the entire hilt. So Brian is not able to mill that down. This is the only reason why I went with this one. I wanted that accuracy in this. Other than that, Brian can pretty much do the exact same thing to a legacy to what he did with the Disney parks. As of now, Disney parks is uh, out of stock out of them. They've been out of stock of them for quite some time. They were running for about 200 bucks. Uh, I did a little digging and I found them on eBay. I found them on there for $300, so $100 more than retail. Um, I mean, I think I wanted, I, I paid about $650 for this service. So if you just kind of put all that together, you're paying $300 for this version, and then you're also paying the $650. So that's $950 alone just for this bad boy. Um, again, that's that's really up to you. If you're going to go to Disneyland um, when it opens here in uh, my next door neighbor of California, if it ever opens and you get the Legacy Saber, yes, he is able to do the exact same thing. If you were lucky enough and you had a Parks version of it and you want that smaller emitter, the Parks version he is able to do. I can't, I can't emphasize that more enough because that is one huge difference and one reason why I really went with this one here. So, like I said, I, you know, I will be leaving a link to Brian's uh, Etsy page. Uh, whenever he is doing commissions again, reach out to him and that way he can take care of that for you. I'm um, telling you he was great to work with. I, that about covers everything on this lightsaber. Um, you know, this review wasn't just based on the lightsaber itself. It is also on um, the experience I did have with Brian at Pit, Pit Force 5. Um, I will use them again, uh, possibly for my Vader. I do have a Black Series Vader that, that is sitting here. Um, but that's whenever he starts doing commission again. But until then, guys, thank you so much. Please like, comment, subscribe to my page. Now, I really enjoy doing this. Um, I know I had just started, but hey, you know, Someone's got to start somewhere. So I um, hope you guys have a good day. You guys take care and may the force be with you.